Oh, hi again, guys. Um, I thought I'd do one a little bit longer today. This one's been requested by a few people that know me. Um, lately, I've been catching a lot of G fish. Or I tend to always catch a lot of G fish, but they're starting to come back on the chew now as uh, weather's starting to cool off. Um, we're getting more and more on the reefs, and a few out while we're snapper fishing. So what I was going to do is just run you guys through just some basic things that I do to catch them. There's nothing too technical about it, too hard, don't think about it too much. A lot of people put way too much effort into chasing jewies. Once you get the basics down pat, they're not that hard to catch. Okay, I've been catching these things since I was what, in grade 6 primary school back in Victoria. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you exactly what rigs I use. and uh, at this video, in the comment section of below this video, I will put a link to some GPS marks where I really do catch the jewies, and I'll explain how to explain to you how I catch them there, so you guys can go out and have a bit of fun, hopefully. Okay, first thing to do is just talk about the outfits. A lot of guys talk about spin rods and light gear and this and that, and you can catch jewies on a lot of different gear. You really can, depending on where you're chasing them. But where I'm chasing them, there's a lot of hard reef and ledges and even we go to artificial blocks and these fish know exactly where they are especially if you hook fish 15 kilo plus they really want to get back to those ledges so we fish some pretty heavy gear for the poor old jewies unfortunately out on the reefs and uh, blocks so basically my go-to rods and reels that's an old monster mesh old good old mongrel mesh and a torium 20 and this is filled up for a 30 pound braid I usually got around a 60 to 80 pound litre, okay? And that's that's my lighter run. I like to use this one mainly on the reefs. You can stop most of the fish on the reefs with this. If I can't stop them, well, generally lower at sharks or big cod or something, which we come across a lot when we're doing this at night time. Um, and if I'm fishing like the artificial blocks or I'm getting done up a few times on my lighter rod, I'll go to this one. It seems like an overkill, but sometimes you need it to get these fish out. This is the one I use, use now the night. This is me Saltiga on a Catalina stick. This is a 24 kilo outfit. And when you're fishing around heavy structure like the artificial blocks off the Gold Coast Seaway or reefs with ledge and you know some big fish around, this outfit. And I still get that up occasionally and usually it's sharks or big cod. Okay. And this one's got an 80 pound leader on it because we got done up the other night and nearly took me finger off of one of these friggin' things. Uh, okay. And before we go any further, at times out here when you're float lining the close reefs and there's no current or very little current in your bait, just sinking pretty much down under the boat, we've well, caught jewies. This is my snapper outfit. It's a little Calcutta. 20 pound braid. And we have pulled jewies anywhere from, say, 6 kilo to 15 kilo up in these things, just float lining. It, you don't ha always have to use heavy gear, but generally if you want to go target them late afternoon, night time, and these reefs, and like I said, there's a lot of cod around, there's sharks, Sometimes cobia pop up. Um, the heavier gear will really will help. And if you look at big fish, like a dewy, say 18 kilo plus, a good fish, you will need it. So they do know where that ledge is. Okay. Next thing is the gear. I keep things very, very simple when I'm chasing these fish. There's two rigs mainly we use out in the reefs and on the blocks. The first one is my, the, like the running sinker. Okay. I just, it's already rigged up, so I'll show you. Okay, this is fishing the other night, and there was a lot of current the other night, so that was a 10 ounce sinker. Don't be scared to use big sinkers and a lot of current. The fish are still there, it just makes hard, fishing a little bit harder. Actually, so it's an 8 ounce, 8 ounce sinker. And I was using pike, so we caught pike out there. So I've got two 70s there, okay? Top one snelled on, bottom one's held on, uni night, and tie whatever night's good for you. And that's basically it. Okay, the only thing I do different than a lot of people, I put a bead here between the sinker and a hook. I think you can see that. Okay, that stops a bit of the not tinging noise when the sinker's bouncing on top of the hook. And I think it also stops the vibration of the sinker hitting the hook. I mean, it doesn't do a bait fish a lot of good banging away, especially in a bit of chop. So you got the rubber there. And it's also Lumo. A lot of guys say Lumo helps. Um, I'm not going to disagree. It might, it might not. I don't know. When you've got a live bait down, you catch them no matter what, if you've got Lumo or not. Okay, so that's a hook rig there. And with this rig, basically, top hook through the nose of the fish, 
or up through the top of the jaw. There's so many videos you'll see that. And this one is just pierced a lot down the skin, really sticking out the side down near the tail. And with, with this rig too, with a heavy sink on it, when you go to drop it down, keep your thumb on the spool so you keep your, cont uh, your bait fish and your sinker in contact with each other. Don't let the sinker take off down the bottom and your bait fish go down below. The heap of line, you'll get tangled. It takes another minute, big deal. Just keep it in your sinker, let it down slowly and bait in contact. When you hit the bottom, wind up a couple of turns, so it's about half a metre to a metre off the bottom, okay? That's got to be off the bottom, otherwise these bait fish, as the sun goes down, first thing they do is go into a little, you know, cave and hide, and for safety, they want to hide. You don't want that. You want them sitting off the bottom, bit of current, the sinker will sit there, the bait will sit here and just swim up anywhere from half a metre to a metre off the bottom, and that's prime time, uh, prime position. Next thing, put your rod in the rod holder, okay? Set your drag, have enough drag so the hook's set. Don't have enough drag to snap your rod in half, because when these fish hit, they hit hard, and you'll know when you're wrong, because the rod will buckle over and the rod tip will nearly be in the water. They start pulling, so if, you, if your drag's too tight, you're gonna break rods, you're gonna break drags, you might even break rod holes if you've got plastic on, okay? So just have enough drag to set the hooks and get the rod out of the rod holder. So basically that's dewy fishing. So I have two rods down where we just chase them, both at the same depth, same sinkers, sometimes different bait. Okay. Um, that's that one. That's one and that's mainly what I'm fishing on the reef, so I use that rig. When I'm fishing, say, the artificial blocks up off the you know, northeast of the seaway. Uh, that's not a bad rig, it does work, but I tend to find a running sinker rig. So basically that rig, but a swivel in. So you've got your sinker, swivel, short trace to your hooks, your bait. So your sinker's sitting you know, a couple of feet away from your, from your bait. That just seems to be a better rig up in the blocks. You get more strikes. And if you're anchored or drifting around the blocks, um, yeah, for some reason dragging your sinker along the bottom with a bait does tend to get more bites than having that in the rod holder just off the bottom. I don't know why, that's just the way it is. Um, and especially if I'm anchored, I'll, just, I'll fish the same way. I'll drop it down, uh, wind up about a metre so it's off the bottom, but I'll have me bait, bait fish just swimming around freely, a bit more freely, not with a sinker on his top of his nose. It just, I don't know, it just seems to work different up there. We've tried both methods, both methods work, but we tend to get more fish and more hits when they've got a bit of play between the bait and the sinker. But once again, rod holder, in gear, okay? Um, next thing, do I drift or uh, do I anchor? Well, to be honest, I mainly anchor. I don't particularly like drifting for dewies. Um, do, it does work, but I prefer not to. I know Doug, or as you know, this is my boss, he does prefer to drift, and he does quite well on them, especially around the blocks and stuff. But yes, I prefer to anchor. Other spot lock, I'll use, you know, back to old school anchors. And the thing is, when I'm fishing for dewies, I try to anchor my boat on the reef or on top of the blocks, so I'm actually fishing off the back ledge of them. Or hopefully over winter, it's a westerly wind, I'm fishing on the outside edge. Like the outside edge or the back, back edge of the reefs and the blocks seems to work really well. You don't generally find the big dew, even the snapper stuff on top of the reef. They're usually on the outside going around. And that's another thing I've noticed I'll tell people. Um, some guys will go out and they'll come out and maybe might catch one or two and then they'll go quiet. Then, oh, it's all over, let's go home, let's go home. Or I've missed one or two, let's go home. Don't. Generally these fish are doing laps. Wait half an hour or an hour and watch your two rods. All of a sudden both of them will go again. And a lot, I see a lot of people get a strike or miss a strike and then don't get one for half an hour and think, stuff, let's, let's go home or leave. Don't. They're still there. They're, just, they're doing laps. Okay? So put them a bit of time and you will hook one. The other thing is, a lot of people, when they head out chasing these fish, they go straight to the bait reefs, looking for bait, finding other bait amongst all the charter baits and everyone else. I don't even bother with that. Never have. Okay? Generally, I, I fish late afternoon into the night because I hate the crowds in the morning. I head out about 3 o'clock. I very rarely stop on the bait reefs. I go straight out to where I'm fishing. And I usually fish around 30 metres, 35 metres, no deeper than that. I don't like fishing that wider. 
for him. So 30, 35 metres. And there's so much reef around the 18s and Charlie Bottom. Just go looking around until you find some bait on a nice little reef. Catch the bait that's out there, okay? Um, and then work out where your drift pattern is, where you need to anchor. So you're either fishing with your lines are going off with a westerly, in, westerly wind, you're going off at back edge, or um, a strong southerly current and all the wind, fish off the you know, back edge or outside edge, okay? And the next thing is, if you can't find bait out there, don't panic. We're always taking a block of pillies or something out there, because while we're doing this, we're float lining for snapper. Always. You take snapper and jewelry basically at the same areas, same time. So, float line for snapper while you're doing this. And the best part about this is out off the Gold Coast is once the sun goes down, for some reason the pike come on thick. They come, you'll see them on the sounder start like down the reef and you'll see them just rising on your sounder. And then you can put small gang hooks and white bait or little bits of pili or a jig head and a little chunk of pili on it and drop it over and you'll catch pike. Number one bait for jewfish. Don't panic if the sun goes down and you haven't got liveys. Just you know, wait half an hour, 45 minutes after dark, you'll see the pike come on. And even if you don't see them on the sounder, keep float lining with your pillies and you'll start getting pike bites and catch, hopefully catching pike. If not, you've got these little did -did -did and fast quick runs, they're pike. And you can't hook them, they're just pike. So, jig head, small hook, just down great. Catch a few pike. Put them back on your big rigs, drop them to the bottom, wind up a metre, put them in rod holder. And there you go. You got your perfect bait for G fish. That's generally what I do. I don't panic about catching bait late afternoon or if I'm running late. Like some of the friends I fish with are bloody hopeless at the time. We don't leave the boat ramp till five o'clock. Not worried. No, I'm going to catch pike after dark. It's very, very rare when we don't catch pike after dark. Okay. So, and that's usually on the reefs. Um, on the blocks themselves, I don't fish the blocks a lot, I'd be honest. When I do go there, it is late afternoon. I do catch bait on the blocks most of the time, so I'm using, usually using yakas. But there's one thing I do do that no one else does, which is can be a bit of fun out there. I'll go into the surf and do either well, reverse surf fishing, cast from the boat onto the shore, and chase a few tailor, catch some tailor late afternoon, westerly winds. It's great fun fishing. And if you get some just, you know, just on legal size, just over legal size, don't put them out whole or keep them live like a lot of people tell you to do. I find that jewies, they don't might you will catch jewies on Taylor, but I generally find you'll find more sharks and shit with them. They're a pain in the ass. So I fill it them. Just take a nice fresh fillet off them. Beautiful fresh Taylor, bloody. Put them on, um, not this rig here, but the one with the running sinker. So you sinker up there, you got a swivel, so your sinker's away from the hooks. Um, put them on that type of rig, head out to the blocks, work out your drift. And drift beside the blocks. Just keep on, this is where you start drifting. Drift beside the blocks, dragging a fresh bit of tailor past the blocks. Fantastic way to catch a heap of school dew. Great fun. That's easy. Works works very well. The only problem with out there, if the dewies are right in the middle of winter, there's every man his dog out there on the block, so it can be a bit tricky. Okay. Um, what else? Okay. Uh, the stuff I use, back to basics, so the people I go with want to know how big their fish are, and generally I can estimate roughly 12 kilo, 14 kilo, whatever. So, but I've got an old brag mat, that's a metre 20 brag mat, people like measuring their fish. If you get one that's on a metre 20, you've got a cracker. That's a good one. Okay, so take a brag mat, just some good basic scales to give you a rough idea if you're no good with, no good with uh, weights. These are like a 20 kilo scale, so 40 pound. If you catch it with that bottom zap, you get yourself a nice fish. Uh, scissors, obviously. I do take a D hooker. One thing with jewies, you've got raspy teeth. You don't want to go sticking your hand down their mouth to get your hooks back. Because they will, they will crunch down on you, and it hurts. Oh, trust me, I've done it. Silly me. Um, and the other thing is, if it gets right down near the gills, some people, I don't know why, you want to figure out and get your hooks back. Generally, you just cut off the rig and tie new rig on, it's quicker and easier. But if they're down the gills, don't stick your hand up in the side of the, in the gills of the jewfish. They've got a little sharp, they've got very, very sharp gill rakers. And once your hand goes in easily, getting them back out is very hard and they will cut you to shreds and it stings like a bitch. Okay, so D hookers are a very good thing for chasing jewies. Another thing is, don't have to go fancy leaders. I just run Instincts, it's a tackle world leader. It's a tough line, so it's got a hard outer coating. It's good abrasion resistance around the reef. 
and that's an 80 pound, it's quite thin. Like I said, I run 60 or an 80. Okay, it's quite thin and works a treat. Usually run about a three meter litre. And then I do an all bright night to my braid. I don't worry about swivels, I never run swivels. Okay. And then the sinkers, obviously. So anything from ball sinkers to these, whatever you want to call them, overall shaped things. But that's a 10 ounce, that's probably about a six. These are just, you only need enough weight to hold your bait on the bottom too. You don't always have to go the big bulky weight like I've got in my rod. I run that because the other night the current was racing. But you can go down to sixes and fours, and even if there's no currents, the smaller the sinker the better. You just need enough bait to hold the bait down on the bottom, okay? And if you had, if you do catch slimies or something, generally you have to go up size and sinkers because slimies will swim around bloody everywhere, even with the big sinkers on. You want to hold them down, not let them free swim everywhere. Okay, hooks are very simple. Just a basic octo octopus hook, that's all. And I match the hooks to the size of the bait I catch. So if I'm catching pike and stuff offshore, they're quite large, I usually run 7 8. If I'm using a small yakas on the bait reefs, I'll go down to a 4 or a 5 8. They'll all work on jewies. They'll swallow them down, get them in the gills. Don't worry about it, they'll be, they'll be fine. Okay, you don't need to run massive hooks in little baits. Just make sure they're a strong hook. So the other thing I run are just like little limo beads between my hook and sinker. Oh, so I'll make sure it's two these. Uh, what else? Like I said, in the description underneath the video, the comment section, I will put a link to a page and I'll mark off, uh, say, three or four different spots on around 18 fathoms, even the blocks, for you guys to go and chase jewies and try these rigs that I've said, try the bait, Chase snapper while you're doing it, float line for snapper. Okay, just to get yourself a feed. And yeah, just put a bait a meter off the bottom, but make sure the bait's off the edge of the reef, outside edge or bottom edge, don't fish on the reef, okay? And next thing, people ask me about moon phrases for jewies. Everyone's got an opinion on moon phrases, full moons, new moons, this, that, and everything else, and tides. And every time I talk to somebody, something different. Simple fact is, you've got time off, the weather's good, go fishing. You'll catch jewies over pretty much all moons. I don't personally like a full moon. I very rarely, very, very, very rarely fish a full moon. But any other moon, falling, rising, new moon, dark moon, I go if the weather's good. You got time, weather's good. Go fishing. Jewies bite pretty much all moons. They really do. They do slow down over a full and a dark. You will, but they are still there. Put in some time. This you probably will catch one. I do prefer like a new moon rising, but once again, can't always get the weather. You get the weather, get the time, just go. Just go out and enjoy the night and chase a snap or something while you're there, just for a bit of fun. Tides. Okay, that tides do come into jewies. Um, that depends on where you're fishing. Offshore, I'm not worried too much about them, but a tide change does generally help. Like a higher water light, tide change does actually trigger a bite, surprisingly. Uh, if you're fishing river mouths and rivers and creeks and everything else, yes, tides do work. I grew up in Victoria with some of the best jewelry fishermen and I got drilled into me from a, from a young age. Low tide's the best tide in the rivers. Low tide in the first couple of hours of running tide. So I've been growing up, but that's the tide I fish if I'm inshore. Low tide running in. But since I've been up in Queensland, um, if, especially fishing the seaway, I prefer a high tide running out. Um, a lot of guys fish high water, which is great in the seaway, around the pipe, you can, you can try and fish on top of it. But generally you just get done up by the little buggers around the pipe. I like a hard running out tide. Personally, I like to anchor my boat away from the pipe and put the baits on the bottom. Once again, running sinker rig, so sinker, swivel, short trace of the bait, not, not this rig here. Drop it to the bottom and let the current pull your bait back, so basically you bounce your bait back. So you put your bait down, when the current starts pulling up higher, let some more line go, let your bait bounce. Pull up a bit higher, let your bait bounce, and bounce it back towards the ledge, uh, towards the pipe and a hard running current. Because the jewies will be sitting behind the pipe, lazy little buggers out of the current. And if your bait goes under the pipe or over the pipe, but generally under the pipe, they'll see it, and they'll smash it. And then you've got a better chance of pulling them out, because you're up here, you're away from the pipe, and so you're gonna pull them out, away from the pipe. When you're fishing straight above it, they run straight down, and your line rubs against the pipe, you're done, it's all over. So generally fishing away from the pipes better. And run out tide off the north wall. It forms a big eddy. 
the end up to the north wall, there's a bit of a hole there. You can sit in that hole at night time, say winter time when there's not much swell and stuff with westerly winds. Put live baits down, once again, running sinker rig. Put live is down there and sit in that, sit in that eddy. Good way to find some good jewies. And if the jewies don't show up, I can tell you the sharks will, so either way, you'll have a fun night. Um, anyway, I think I've rambled on enough. Guys, just, yeah, if the weather's good, get out and have a crack. Try these basic rigs. Fish about 30 pound if you can. Um, fish the outside edge of the reefs. Uh, fish just the outside edge or bottom edge of the blocks. And don't worry about running to the bait reefs to catch jackets. Catch pike when you're out there after dark. Okay, try these few tips. Um, good luck. I hope it works. And if it does, let me know. Thanks, guys. Bye.